wanted to hop on here and just wrap up our series of videos that we've been doing on more essential oil in the Bible. So hello, my name is Angela Weber. I'm an independent distributor with Young Living Essential Oils. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in biology. I have a passion for connecting you with the information that uh, you need to support your family's health and wellness goals. Okay, so today um, we're gonna be talking about myrrh and Jesus's resurrection. Okay, so today we're gonna start in um, the book of John, which is in the New Testament, um, John 19:39, And this is when Jesus is laid in the tomb. So when Jesus was crucified, a disciple named Joseph of Arimathea, he asked for Jesus's body. And Pilate, who if you remember, he was the governor who ordered uh, Jesus's resurrection. He agreed to let Joseph take Jesus's body. Um, but Je jo uh, Joseph was not alone. He was accompanied by a man named Nicodemus. Now, if you remember, Nicodemus, um, he was a Pharisee who had come to Jesus back in John chapter 3, and he had asked for clarification um, on what it means to be born again. And in answering him, Jesus said one of the most quoted scriptures of all time, John 3, 16. And Jesus, when Jesus answered him, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so this is the same Nicodemus that Jesus had been talking to in that verse, the same Nicodemus now accompanied uh, Joseph of Arimathea to take Jesus's body and bury it. Um, so we're going to read in John 19 verses 39 through 42 say this. He was accompanied by Nicodemus. It's talking about Joseph. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So did you catch how much myrrh and aloes Nicodemus brought? Does anybody catch that? It was 75 pounds, okay? My son, my eight-year-old son, he only weighs about 50 pounds. So it was one and a half Wyatts, <laughs> you could say. That was a lot of myrrh and aloes. Now, remember, um, myrrh essential oil, oh, I'm sorry, I was going to say that the Aloes, I believe, refers to sandalwood. Okay, so it could have been sandalwood. And the, the myrrh, we don't know. Um, hey, Cheryl. So we don't know. It could have been liquid myrrh. It could have been solid myrrh. We're not sure. So if it was liquid, it could have been myrrh essential oil. And if it was solid, remember that myrrh is distilled from the resin of the tree. So it could have been um, like these, these like chunks of the resin, the resin chunks, a little almost look like little rocks, um, but they're not, they're dried resin. So we don't know if it was liquid myrrh, then the strips of linen could have been dipped in this um, myrrh essential oil before wrapping Jesus's body. If it had been solid, the solid resinous myrrh, it could have been tucked within the folds um, as Jesus's body was wrapped. But we know that there were 75 pounds of myrrh and aloes because that's what Nicodemus brought. Hi, Carrie. Um, okay, so the, and when we get to John, John chapter 20, we see Jesus's resurrection. So Mary Magdalene and another Mary that's mentioned in, Ma in the book of Matthew, and not mentioned in the book of John, but mentioned in the book of Matthew, um, these two Marys have come to the tomb with spices. And back then, bringing spices to the tomb, it was like bringing flowers to the grave today. OK, so they they come to the tomb and the way that the tombs were sealed back in this day was a large stone would have been rolled in front of the um, uh, it would have been cut like it would have been cut out of the side of the rock and then allowed to roll and cover the opening to the tomb. Okay, so when Mary and Mary Magdalene get to the tomb, Jesus' tomb, they see that the stone has been rolled back. And they run to Simon Peter and John, and they say they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. And so Peter and John, they run to the tomb, and John gets there first. He doesn't go in. He just kind of looks in, and he sees the strips of linen are lying there. And then Simon Peter gets there, and he bypasses everybody. He goes straight into the tomb. You know, he was 
very excited. So he goes straight into the tomb and he sees the strips of linen laying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus's head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Now, let's think back. What had the cloth, the linen strips had been dipped in or folded with before, um, before either dipped in before using Jesus, uh, wrapping Jesus's body or folded in um, while they were wrapping his body? It was myrrh. So Jesus's body is no longer there. It's the third day. He has been resurrected. He is alive. But the aroma of the myrrh essential oil and the sandalwood aloes um, in that of, of those strips would have filled that tomb. That tomb would have been filled with the aroma of myrrh. So we see that there was the aroma of myrrh really throughout the life of Jesus. If you were to share the gospel, the story of the gospel with somebody, having um, a bottle of myrrh oil there would be a great kind of experiential thing to do because remember, myrrh was there. The wise men brought myrrh. They got, you could also let someone smell frankincense and have that experience. Um, frankincense and myrrh were there at Jesus's early childhood when the wise men brought it to his, his, his early boyhood home. We also saw myrrh at the cross. Whenever Jesus was up on the cross um, being crucified, uh, the myrrh was, the, the wine was smornizued with the myrrh. Remember that? And offered to Jesus. And then finally, we see myrrh here at the resurrection whenever the two Marys come and they see that Jesus is no longer um, in the tomb. Simon Peter and John come in and they see that the only thing there are the strips of linen that had been either dipped in the myrrh or folded with the myrrh and with the aloes. Um, so yeah, myrrh is a wonderful, a wonderful oil to use uh, whenever you are sharing uh, the gospel with somebody, if you wanted to use that kind of to make it a, a richer experience. So that is the final place where we are going to talk about myrrh being in um, the Bible. You can also find it in Revelation uh, uh, chapter 13, I'm sorry, chapter 18, verse 13, if you want to look it up there. Um, but I hope that you have enjoyed our, our little um trip through the Bible of the places that we've seen myrrh. We saw it in Egypt and we see it um, uh, in Jerusalem and Israel. Uh, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. Okay. Have a great afternoon. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.